Hey everybody, it's Chad Criswell with the Music Education Minute for, what is today? September 4th, 2015. Uh, doing things a little bit different. As you can see, I don't have all the fancy bells and whistles. Two reasons for that. Number one, uh, total meltdown on my computer over the last two weeks, which of course corresponded right with the beginning of the new school year, which meant that I didn't even try to do a show last week because my computer was in pieces, finally got everything back together, got the Music Ed Monthly episode put up last week, or was it two weeks ago? It all runs together with me now, all right? Uh, but there were so many technical problems that I just kind of gave up on it. Uh, finally got Windows 10 up and running. Yeah, thank you, Microsoft. It doesn't like to play well with my hardware because I, I like to tweak a lot and... Uh, when you tweak settings in Windows 7, it doesn't like to upgrade to Windows 10, it turns out. Then, of course, to top it all off, my nice, beautiful Spark Digital seems to have bit the dust. Um, it won't be recognized on any of my computers in the house now for some reason, so I am recording it with a different microphone, which is why my voice sounds probably a little bit different. Uh, so today we're doing it totally old school. No fancy graph. Well, okay, one fancy graphic behind me. But other than that, uh, no fancy audio, nothing else. We're going to talk today, though, about something that's come up several times, including in the Music Ed Monthly podcast from last week uh, when I was visiting with Chris Russell. And that is the topic of how do you get your iPad video onto your computer screen? Now, this is good for doing podcasting, like what I'm doing right now when I'm talking about apps. But it's also really good for using at school if you're a school teacher and you want to get the video from your iPad onto your school computer. How do you do that? Well, you got plenty of options. Guarantee you some of them are not going to work with your computer at school, but we're still going to try them here and I'm going to show you what's up. All right. First off, let me get my screen going. Uh, which one would it be? There we go. All right. Let me turn that off for a second. All right, so this is my computer screen. This is my desktop. As you can see, yes, I am running Windows 10 finally. All right, it, it kind of works. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is I have got an app called Mirroring 360 running in the background. When I have Mirroring 360 running, that means that I can go into my iPad and I can swipe up. I'll show you once I get this running here. I can swipe up on the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to touch at the bottom screen. I'm going to swipe up with one finger and that pops up a little control panel here. Down here at the bottom, because I've got this mirroring 360 app running, it gives me an option for AirPlay. And if I hit iPad, then that basically turns it all off. If I hit the desktop one here, like I do, okay, so I'll hit iPad. As you can see, it went away. If I hit desktop, it shows up there and I can turn it on or off um, that way, okay? So now I'm streaming directly from my iPad to the computer and as you can see, it, it works pretty good. Now there is a little bit of latency and the latency totally depends on your Wi-Fi network. So at home, you might not have any problems. At school, you might have lots of problems if your school Wi-Fi network is overloaded. There's some other problems that go along with that that we'll talk about here in a second. But like I said, Mirroring 360 is my favorite app for this so far. I've tried several, and this is the only one that I can get to work fairly reliably. Plus, I like the company, all right? The company is also the maker of uh, Splashtop, which is a great remote control program that lets you control your computer from any other computer. So like I've got a, a Windows Media Center box downstairs in my basement that records stuff off of the over-the-air antenna and I can connect to it from my desktop in my office and do stuff on it to, you know, program it for whatever I need without having to physically go down there, turn on the TV, wiggle the mouse, and, and get it going. It, it's very convenient. Mirroring 360 works really good on it as well, and as you can see, it, it switches and, and changes uh, orientation based on how I, I move the move the iPad. It also allows multiple devices. I'm going to pull out my iPhone here. I'm going to do the same thing on it. I'm going to tell it to share. Okay, come on, let's go. Let me turn it off and turn it back on. 
go figure. Of course, it's not going to work for you right now. It was working great all day long. But now, let's see. Come on, connect. There it goes. All right. So now I've got it connected. I'm going to say done. I'm going to swipe down. And now you can see both of them at the same time. And if I turn the orientation of one of them, let's say, I guess I have to get into an app in order to do this. Let's do an app that's actually going to switch. Um, what's going to switch? Let's see. Yeah, please don't laugh at all my apps. All right, man. Yes, I'm a Hearthstone addict. If you are a Hearthstone player, I will beat you into a pulp at some point here. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll turn on this one. All right, it's a new one. See, that's sideways. And I don't know if you can hear the audio from it or not, but I can hear the audio from it coming through my headphones. Uh, I'm going to turn that off here. That's the other nice thing about the mirroring. It does include the audio. So if you stream a video or something from your iPad or from your uh, iPhone, you'll be able to hear the audio with it. Now, there's some limitations. Yeah, like any good thing, Apple screws it up. All right. Um, mirroring is great, but there are some apps that will not allow you to stream video and other things from your iPad to a large screen device. I have been told, although I have not tried it, that HBO Go, if you have like HBO Go, it's a video show, you know, you can, you can watch HBO shows on your phone and such. If you can see them on the, the iPhone, you try and stream it, it won't do it. It'll just put an HBO Go logo up on the big TV screen. So some apps will not stream. Many of them, most of them probably will. Um, again, though, latency is an issue over the Wi-Fi network. You may see some lag between what's happening on the screen and the audio um, that's coming out of your, your speakers. So let's talk really quick. That's what mirroring is, and that's how it works. This is, like I said, this is Splashtop's uh, Mirroring 360, which is my favorite. I'm going to bring up my... Uh, list of stuff here. This is Mirroring 360. It costs about $15. Uh, let's you use it on one computer for $15. All right. Uh, the way I have it set up is that at school, uh, I've got a, a $15 license on my computer, on my laptop that I carry from building to building when I'm teaching. And it works fine on in every school but one. Now, here's the other caveat to almost every single mirroring option that you have out there. I guarantee you, you will find some situations where it doesn't work because they have their network locked down in a way that does not allow you to be able to stream from your device to a computer. Um, sometimes you can fix that. If you talk to your IT department, they may have a suggestion for a specific app that they know works with their networks. But in other cases, it may just be a lost cause because your network may be so saturated with other traffic that there's just no room left for it to stream high def audio from your high def video, pardon me, from your iPad or iDevice um, to a computer screen. But if you're going to do it, I highly recommend Mirroring 360. I have also tried Air Server. Air Server is actually cheaper if you're doing educational licensing. Um, pretty much all of the mirroring apps cost $15 for a single person consumer license. Uh, Air Server. As you can see, between $8 and $12 for the educational license, and they all provide a seven-day trial. All of these apps that I'm going to mention provide a seven-day trial at least. Try them before you buy, and make sure that they work in every building that you are going to use it at before you invest in it. Okay, so that's uh, Air Server. It works pretty good. I don't have a problem with it at all. Again, it's both PC Mac compatible, just like Mirroring 360 is. Doceri is an app that is a... It lets you mirror like this, but it is more or less a um, capturing whiteboard app. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, Doceri really isn't. Why did I even have this in here? Okay, forget I said Doceri. Doceri, no. Forget Doceri. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm fried. Sorry, it's the second week of school. Uh, Reflector two. This is another app. This is, I believe this is Mac only. I'm, I'm sorry, I am not a Mac person, so I don't honestly know anymore, but I'm pretty sure it's only for Macs. Um, lots of people swear by this if you have a Mac. So go for Reflector if you're a Macintosh person. If you want to get a little bit more uh, expensive, 
you can consider getting an Apple Digital AV adapter. They cost, like you see here, about 25 bucks over on Amazon. Let's you connect this to your iPad or iPhone, and then you connect like an HDMI cable, or in some cases a VGA cable to it, goes out to your computer, lets you do the same thing, uh, or to a, a TV screen if you're going out with uh, the HDMI cable. They work fine. Same limitations though as the, as the other products. If it won't stream uh, to the computer using Mirroring 360, it's not going to stream like this, uh, just because of the limitations that certain channels and certain apps have on the content. The other option that you have that works a little bit better than most in some cases is the Apple TV. Now, some people like uh, my co-host from last week's uh, Music Ed Monthly episode, he swears by the Apple TV. He loves the Apple TV. Um, and especially the newer version, he said, works even better than the older versions as far as streaming content to a PC uh, or to a video projector from your iPad. So those are your options if you're going to go and, and do mirroring, if you want to be able to show your iPad on the screen. Highly recommend it. Some of them will do many different screens. You saw that with mine with Mirroring 360, it'll do at least two screens. I've never tried it with more than that. But imagine having you know four iPad screens up there on the screen at the same time and your kids you know, interacting with each other, so to speak, that way. Uh, check it out. Try it in your classroom. Hope you like it. Hey, this has been the Music Education Minute for whatever day today is. I'm sorry, guys. Like I said, I'm brain fried. Whoa, there's my head again. Oh, that's not it either. This has been the Music Ed Minute for September 4th, 2015. This is episode 15. Please go over to Music Ed Magic, sign up for the newsletter, go over to iTunes and sign up for the podcast. Subscribe for it, bit.ly slash Music Ed Magic. Got to do the capital letters on the bit.ly link there. If you're going to Music Ed Magic, it really doesn't matter though. Again, guys, this is Chad Criswell. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.